Within only a couple of years, the last dinner party have done what so many artists can only dream of. They are a rock band who have achieved unprecedented success with their debut album, Prelude to Ecstasy, and debut single, Nothing Matters. But along with this success comes debate, and now the band are facing off allegations that they are somehow this manufactured product, that they are Nepo babies or industry plants. In recent videos I've been looking at the debut eras of famous bands, but this will be my first time looking at one as it unfolds before our eyes. So today let's talk about The Last Dinner Party, who they are, and dispel these ridiculous notions that their success is somehow unearned or manufactured. Formed in 2021, the members mostly met through studying at King's College London. However, it was a shared love for the local music scene that really brought them together. Being whip-smart and highly organised, the band pulled their resources and roped in a few friends to help them work on a photo shoot. Plus, they spent several months rehearsing while waiting for Covid restrictions to be lifted so they could really go out and play gigs properly. Indeed, when they did go out and play gigs, they weren't playing the biggest or most established of venues. Their first gig wasn't open in Hyde Park for the Rolling Stones. It was in fact at the George Tavern in London, where ticket prices were £5.50. The first year of this band reminds me a lot of a band you guys probably haven't heard of, but one named Projector. Briefly, Projector are a free piece from Brighton who are heavily inspired by the Pixies and Nirvana. The first time I saw them live, they were supporting the punk rock band Kick Peachy, and since becoming a fan, I've also seen them at the Hope and Ruin in Brighton and the Moth Club up in London. The members of this band studied at the prestigious music college BIM, and it's there that I expect they gained the connections that allowed them to play these sorts of venues, as well as having some of their early songs released on the tiny indie label Roadkill Records. There's been nothing in my research to tell me how The Last Dinner Party came about their first gig, but if I had to guess I reckon it would be a similar story, with King's College of London being an excellent nurturing spot to really build those networks and connections that could then get them out there playing grassroots venues. But The Last Dinner Party are not Projector, who by the way I think are massively underrated. The Last Dinner Party are a major label band signed to Island Records and managed by Q Prime. How did that happen? To try to answer that, let's jump forward to their first single, Nothing Matters. Immediately after the release of this song, the band's whole career and career prospects completely changed. Suddenly there came press, suddenly people noticed, and suddenly there came bigger opportunities. Why? Sometimes the most obvious solution is the accurate one. Nothing Matters is a bloody good song. In this world of social media and instant celebrity, it can be easy to forget why we engage with popular culture. Indeed, I would argue that the reason why a band or musical artist becomes successful is because they write good songs. Indeed, although I am trying to grow this YouTube channel and I want to improve my ability to make video essays, my main goal is to write great music, and if I could dictate how I would like to be remembered, it would be through writing a song that resonated with many people. I mentioned that in the band's early days, they roped in a few friends and made a photo shoot. And indeed, when you look at their early Instagram posts, an app designed for posting photos and pictures, you can see their core Baroque and decadent imagery intact right from the very beginning albeit scrappier and lower budget. These people had a clear vision right from the beginning and they had the musical chops to back that up. Perhaps that was why it was simply live videos of the band playing posted onto YouTube that led to them gaining a major record deal. To an outsider, The Last Dinner Party's success comes across like an overnight one, and as such I can somewhat understand the allegations. But the only concession I would give the band is that they got lucky. Lucky to have the right video viewed by the right person at the right time. Otherwise, I would argue that the band's success came down to getting a number of things right. For a start, London is a major music city, as well as of course being the capital of England. 
that meeting at university implies that they are intelligent and put in the effort to attain the right skills and get a good education. Their focus on the imagery demonstrates that they had a clear vision right from the beginning. Indeed, although I might wear a hat and a waistcoat when I'm playing gigs, the truth is that outside of that I don't really have any idea or much of an opinion of what my imagery around my brand should be. To succeed in music you have to stand out and the last dinner party do just that. But looks can only get you so far and if the band didn't write music that resonated with thousands of people across the country we wouldn't be seeing them in the position that they are in today. When we look at some bands it can be difficult to tell what exactly happened to make them famous and what secrets we could uncover. But with The Last Dinner Party, I would argue that the truth is painfully obvious. Make great songs, pair that with a strong image, and then have the savviness and networking skill to get your music out there. The Last Dinner Party's rise to success has been meteoric, and indeed it would be foolish for any of us with the same dream to expect to follow these simple steps and get there as quickly, if at all. But when we look at The Last Dinner Party and the amazing success that they have achieved, we should allow that to give us hope, both in ourselves and in the music industry as a whole. Guys, thank you for watching this video. My name is Vincent Turner and as I alluded to earlier, I do have my own music and I am an aspiring independent artist. I'll link some of that here in the end screen for you to listen to. Plus, I'll link some of my other video essays, which you may find enjoyment in watching. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and I hope to see you in another video.